First for news and the best live sport. This is BBC Five Live. And it's Five Live Breakfast. Good morning, I'm Rachel Burden. Our top news story this morning, Brexit. MPs prepare for the big vote. Uh, so today is the vote on uh, Brexit in Parliament and we're with a group of uh, Year 12 uh, government politics students at WIKE and we're getting their ideas and views on whether they think uh, Brexit uh, is a positive thing for the country or whether it's negative. So the first thing we're going to address uh, here um, is what are the potential advantages or disadvantages uh, of leaving the EU. This is Jasmine. Um, I don't actually think there's many advantages to leaving the EU. I'm very much pro-Remain. Um, I think by leaving the EU as we're doing, we're just going to end up with no deal and we'll end up paying into an EU and have no control over legislature. Yeah. OK, and has anybody got any ideas about what um, the advantages of leaving uh, the EU might be? I think Finlay um, is one of our uh, key Remainers in the group. Finlay, what do you think about uh, Brexit as being a good idea? Well, I think, first of all, I think we've got to take control back of everything. Um, I think a lot of the things that have come out of that is just about immigration, but it's not just immigration. It's control over our policies, you know. When you look at our laws, I think our courts especially come to mind when you think about it. And the fact that we don't really have much control, as I think we deserve over our courts, and I think that's especially one of the major issues. And then I think when you look at it as well, the immigration part definitely did play a massive part, because I think when you look in some areas, especially when you look in typical working-class areas where... A lot of the immigrants tend to live and work. Um, it does cause a massive divide, and don't get me wrong, a lot of them do pay a lot to society, but sometimes it can cause a massive drain on our healthcare and our education system. Okay. Um, so in relation to um, how the referendum campaign uh, was run, that's been quite controversial. There was a TV programme uh, about the Leave campaign uh, aired on uh, Channel 4, I think, the other night. Uh, so any, has anybody got any ideas about the actual campaign itself um, and the controversies surrounding that? Go again. Um, I actually think that the Leave campaign was it really misinformed the general public. Um, the fact that they used Cambridge Analytica to like gather data and put... Um, software in place which combined like Twitters and Facebook like things to make people like want to vote leave was out of order and I don't think they should have misinformed the public as much as they did especially with the 350 million pound going to the NHS and they had no control even if that was promised they had no control of that because they wouldn't have ever formed a parliament or a government. Okay very good um, so we kind of move on now to um, arguably what's been decided today Will a decision actually be made in relation to uh, Theresa May's vote? Will Theresa May bring the deal back in a week's time, even if it's voted down today? Will we actually leave the EU? And if we do, in what form? Um, Taylor, have you got any views on that? Uh, I, I can see it being that we don't leave. I think that the vote won't get through Parliament and it's just going to make the country look... Uh, like a disaster really because we've just gone round in a circle nothing's changed on the deal so I don't think it's going to get anywhere yeah okay I think quite a few people are beginning to kind of contemplate the idea that um, it might not uh, happen in the form that many people believe any other views on uh, what the future is going to hold Amelia um I think it's quite unstable um when we're in the EU we were probably the most economically strong as a country but i can only see weakness in our future which is pretty sad but yeah okay um anybody um think that the um what would be the impact um if we don't leave what was what's the effect going to be anybody got any views um on uh what happens if we don't uh leave um i, I just don't think the country's going to really get many places if we leave because I mean, not, there's not really much that could really happen that would benefit us if we leave because we're just going to, yeah, we get more money, but there's not really much to do with it and we're going to have to pay more for like trade and things anyway, so what's the point? Sure, okay. Yes, Dan? It, like, if we end up not leaving, people could end up uh, going in mass to the, far, to the far right because they've lost faith in the more left parties and the government and might push them to extreme ideals. Yeah, I think that's a serious problem, isn't it? This idea that are we undermining democracy 
um, if the decision of Parliament is, sorry, if the decision of the people isn't implemented uh, in some form. Anybody got any views on the outcome of tonight's uh, vote? How do you think that's going to go? Molly, what would you think? Um, I think they're going to vote down a deal. I don't think it's going to get through at all. But I also think that if she comes back a week later and she says, oh, you'd have renegotiated, even though this deal is really no different to the one that she presented late last year, I think it's shameful, really, if, if it does, it really paints a negative picture of the Conservative Party. If she does come back, she's kind of, it's like trial and try and try and try again and I think Jeremy Corbyn should uh, call a vote of no confidence if it gets voted down tonight. Mm, okay that's an interesting point isn't it because Corbyn uh, has been arguing for um, an election that this is the best way to deal with the uh, issue now have an election and let the people decide um, is that going to be a solution what do we think Dan? Um, the EU said they're not going to re renegotiate, so an election wouldn't solve anything. It's either no deal, May's deal, or no Brexit. So an election would do nothing. It's either a referendum or Brexit. You know, like there's no, it would be pointless to have an election. Mm. Um, any views on why you think we've got to this stage? Why we've got uh, to this uh, impasse almost? Um, I'm thinking particularly in relation to how do you feel uh, that the opposition uh, parties, maybe Corbyn um, has dealt with this. Theresa May gets um, a lot of the blame and criticism, but um, I think there's maybe a bit more to uh, be shared around. Um, any views on Corbyn's uh, leadership of the Labour Party or the Labour Party itself? Yeah, Jacob. I blame it on the weakness of our political leadership at this time. So. With Theresa May heading into negotiations, she had an incredibly weak hand and a weak mandate. And lo um, losing an election with the popular vote gave her such a weak legitimacy going into those negotiations. And Corbyn did not help at all because the whole time he has not provided any sort of form of leadership at all. And you can see with Jeremy Corbyn that um, throughout his tenure in the Labour Party, whenever there's a crisis, he's never been able to provide that, that leadership, that certainty. And... It kind of leads to the point where if there is an election and he potentially becomes Prime Minister, I don't think Jeremy Corbyn is ever going to be able to unite this divided nation that's been generated by Brexit. And, yeah, Theresa May went into the negotiations and it's been disastrous because she's completely submitted to the European Union. I mean, as a Remainer, I agree with, I agree with remaining in the European Union. But I feel like to respect democracy, she had to go into that, into negotiations, place Britain in a strong position and get a good deal. But she's completely failed on that behalf, and um, I think we should we should potentially have another referendum to change this. Okay, very good. Molly, you, you had something to say about that last um, question? I do think Jeremy Corbyn's been quite fast to point the finger at Theresa May with all her downfalls and everything that he personally feels that she's done wrong, but he's offered no real solutions. I know he has his, his few things they would implement, but he's offered no real solutions to the Brexit plan and no proper amendments, and I think... I just think that paints him as quite weak, really. The fact that he's OK to say negative things about her, and, but he's, he can offer no solutions himself, and it makes the Labour Party look quite weak. Yeah. Um, so maybe one last question, because we've thought about the political parties in this country and how they've dealt with it. What about the EU? Um, how Has anybody got any views on how the EU have negotiated? Um, is it their fault? Um, that uh, we are struggling uh, to uh, get uh, a fair deal. Any views on that? Yeah, Jack? Uh, well, they wouldn't really like, let us have a good deal because if they did, then like, other countries would join and like, want to leave. Because if, if we can get a good deal, why can't they? So obviously they're going to make it difficult mm -hmm. for us to get out and like, they would for any other country because it don't, ben don't benefit them us leaving. Excellent, really good. So um, I think should we finish off by having a show of hands yeah, in relation to um, what we think is the best thing for uh, the UK at this point? Um, how many people uh, would feel that the best thing would be to remain uh, in the EU? Okay, and how many people uh, think it would be best if we uh, leave either under Theresa May's deal or no deal? Okay, thank you very much. There we go, that's our views uh, from uh, Wyke today. We'll see what happens this evening. Uh, hopefully some decision, but we'll have to see.